In our fourth episode, Brandon and I explore the first of our 12 manager intelligence skills, individualize. You will learn what this skill is, why the best managers have honed and developed it, and some practical tools you can utilize to develop this skill. Let's dive right in. Congratulations, you are tuned into Leading Strong, the place to be to level up your leadership effectiveness on one of your most important roles, engaging your employees. Managers are responsible for at least 70% of their employees' engagement. The best managers, like you, lead strong by constantly honing and developing the skills needed to keep their teams engaged. Your hosts, Darren Barasami and Brandon Miller, are the co-founders of 34 Strong, a company that creates great places to work. Their team has worked in Fortune 500 companies, government agencies, and small businesses to lead strong. Now over to Darren. Welcome to Season 1 of Leading Strong, where we will dive deep to grow your manager intelligence. I'm your host, Darren Varasami, here to serve you in your continued discovery and growth to lead strong. This episode of Leading Strong is brought to you by 34 Strong, where organizations just like yours become great places to work. To find out more, check out 34strong.com. Welcome to episode four of the Manager Intelligence Podcast. In today's series, we're going to unpack the first of the 12 manager intelligence skills. We're going to unpack the skill of individualize. I am one of your hosts. I'm Darren Verasami. And joining me today as well as our co-host is Brandon Miller. We are the co-founders of 34 Strong. Brandon, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic, Darren. Great to be here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited to get jumping into today. So for those of you tuning in for the first time, the whole concept of manager intelligence was born out of the fact that so often when we look at the employee engagement challenges that are taking place in organizations all across the globe, it ties directly into this single notion. People don't quit bad organizations. They're quitting their boss. They're quitting their manager. And the root of the issue is the fact that a lot of times managers have not been trained on how to actually manage, how to actually engage their employees. And this is hugely costly in the way of safety incidents, turnover, right? Lawsuits, injuries on the job, people not showing up. So it costs us massively. So in today's section and in all of, in many of these episodes going forward, we're going to be unpacking one of the manager intelligence skills. And then we'll give you a preview of what's coming next week. So this week we're getting into this skill called individualize. Now, a lot of times when we hear that word individualized, random people think of, oh, I get it. As a manager, I need to really focus on my individual growth. That's <laughs> not actually what we're talking about. That's very important. And the fact that you're listening and paying attention to this is huge. We're going to take you through what this skill means and actually give you some nuggets at the end as to how you can actually invest in developing this skill. Because these are the skills that the best bosses have been able to hone, develop, and cultivate in the best of times, and especially in the worst of times. That's how they create engagement on their team. So when we look at individualize, we've got to be able to individualize our approach to our team. And everyone reacts very differently in any given situations, but especially in times of crisis or uncertainty. Right, Brandon? So take us away. Give us a little bit of insight on what this individualized skill actually is. When we think about each person being unique, having a past, having a present, having a future, having experiences that brought them to the point where you and them intersect, and having a certain custom or path that they choose that's most familiar to them, all of us without question understand that no two people are the same. In a management role, it's possible that yet with that knowledge, we start to expect the same response from different people. We actually think, well, I treated Darren one way and he should respond because that's how Aaron, another member of our team, responded. That's how Paul responds. And yet stepping back, we would each understand, well, that's not possible. Darren has a way that he thinks and feels, behaves, and he has a past and experiences that shape him. So does Paul or Aaron. And to individualize is to appreciate this, to respect it, 
to pinpoint my approach to you that matches who you are, how you best communicate, the way you receive information, and adjust to that style. It is a skill that requires some very intentional learning, and we place it number one on purpose. It's the foundation for manager intelligence is this skill that can be developed to know how to individualize your approach to each member of a team. You know, so often, Brandon, I think we both have experienced this in our own roles and growing 34 Strong together and managing outside as well. So often, as you were talking about there, right, we're communicating For many managers, I know I experienced this in the past. Heck, I still have experienced it at times, but at least I have a way to hit the pause button and reset. But it can feel like we're playing a game of telephone, right? You remember playing that game as a kid, Brandon? You whisper something into somebody's ear. It goes around, and then by the time it's a 20th student, it's completely different than what you said first. You might have said 34 strong, and then by the time it gets to somebody else, they're like, build a roof. And we're like, how did we get to that point? And there's some elements of communication that are lost in those processes. So what you're really saying is when we get to individualize, we understand how each person best receives that. Now, how does growing this skill help us? How's it going to improve productivity on our team? How's it going to create some impact as we're kind of moving through this cycle here? We'll use a, a really good example here. And it just comes down to learning styles. Okay, so people have shared that there are three learning styles primarily. I think some might add to this list, but we'll go with three primary. So some people learn visually. They see it. They memorize it. That's how they understand it often through the medium of their eyes, and that's how they're going to absorb information. Some will hear auditory learners. They need to listen or verbally process, but that's how they will most often recall what it is that they are learning. And then third, hands-on, tactile, or kinesthetic learners. Now, if I am your boss, it is very likely the way that I train you or teach you is to my primary learning style. I happen to be an auditory learner. I do prefer to verbal process. I do prefer to talk ideas out more than write them out. However, I work with a team member that is visual. For this team member, the information needs to be written out. In fact, often this team member would ask, hey, I know we're going to talk about this. Could you please put this in an email? And at first, when the request came, I bristled. It was, I'm explaining this. Why aren't you hearing this? Why do you need me to now go back and write it? Really, I don't prefer emails. So I was reacting to that more than the request. But as I came to understand and I saw a lack of transmission, something about the expectation I was giving was missing because retention wasn't there. Though I thought, what are you missing? I gave you all the instructions. You have everything you need. What more do you want? That learning style did not suit this person. So if I want to be misunderstood, I continue to use my style for someone who doesn't share my style. If I want to deal with confusion, complexities, missing the mark, That's what happens when we don't develop the skill. So it does require being proactive. It requires taking initiative to say, I want to understand where you're coming from. And learning styles would be a good example of that opportunity to grow this skill. And this is really important for anybody that's listening as a manager, because oftentimes as a manager, we have to manage in two directions, right? We have to manage those that report to us. And then we have to manage up, right? And understanding these differences and figuring out how we can individualize the communication. Some of the questions that we'll leave you with at the end can help you unlock that, not only for yourself, but for those that you're managing and managing upwards. You know, when Brandon and I first got together, started 34 Strong, I very well could have been that team member, right? And I do some verbal processing and going through, but when we first started working together, we weren't eating our own cooking, right, Brandon? Brandon would verbally process I was catching ideas and I said, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. And then I'd go to task with them and I would find out that maybe Brandon was still in the thinking cycle and it would drive me crazy. Then I would drive him crazy. And we didn't sit there and camp out. We talked about it and realized, oh my gosh, we both are passionate about this. We both are seeing where this can go. We just got to make sure our cadence is aligned up, right? So we're playing in harmony with each other, right? In concert. And that's exactly what happened. I know Brandon's a verbal processor now. If I'm unsure, I can ask, hey, do you need some time? Are we just talking it out? Are we going right to task? Are we attacking this and putting this right there? Brandon has adapted his style with one simple statement by just saying, guys, I just need to verbally process. I've seen him do that time and time again 
as a leader in front of our team just to prime them. I'm just talking out some ideas and you're watching me think. Now, as you can tell in listening in, Brandon, just when he speaks, he's incredibly convincing in his style, right? So he will speak and that will come across. So just by setting that primer, that's been a huge adjustment in the cadence in receiving that. I've learned so much from watching that take place with our team and how I follow suit, not only communicating with him, but the rest of our team and going through that. Brandon, you know, there's the four needs of followers, right? There's a book that we're both a big fan of. We're going to have two books that we actually talk about today, but one of them is Strikes-Based Leadership. That's by Tom Rath and Barry Conchie. And it gets into why do people follow? And there's these four needs of followers, right? So those four needs are trust, compassion, stability, and hope. And it's critical for to be successful when you're managing people that you're actually tripping these, that you're triggering these, that you're hitting these particular needs. Can you take us through a little bit about these needs and how individualizing can help us to make sure that we're meeting these needs, even in times of uncertainty? I'll spend a few minutes on trust because I think it's the bedrock. I think this is the need every follower shares at a deep level because we want to count on those who lead us. We want to be able to believe them. We want to know that they're, they are reliable. In fact, I've heard it said that the word trust is putting all of your weight on. So if I trust a chair, then I'm comfortable standing on the chair to reach something on a top shelf. If I don't trust the chair, I'm not putting all my weight on it. And if you know who I am, I'm not a small guy. So therefore, I have to test the chair. Well, that's trust. And what we need to know about the skill to individualize is that people arrive at trust very different ways. Some people give trust all at once. Here you go, Darren, get all the trust I have, spend it wisely, right? And it's Darren's to lose. And the hope is that he makes good on that trust, but I lead with that. It's out in front of me. Other people give trust out in very small increments. Don't mess it up. Here's a little bit more. Okay, keep going. Here's a little bit more, but they're a little less inclined to accept if you break trust, meaning if you do, they may just take it all the way back. And so as a person managing someone else, it is really helpful to know how they account for trust. If you give trust very slow or in increments and you work with someone who gives it quickly and would like it back, it is helpful to understand what they're expecting of you and vice versa. So this need is felt by all. How it is administered and how it is understood is different. The same could be said for how people receive compassion. Some people, when you use the word compassion, it makes them feel weird. (laughs) They're like, what are we talking about here? (laughs) Why are we using that word? That's too close. That's too sensitive. That word's too soft, right? Why are we even bringing that up? I mean, just off. And others are, oh, thank you. Yeah, very important to me. I require compassion. Yet, Wrath and Conchi would tell us we all need it. We all want to be cared for. We all want to be considered. We want to be recognized as the individual person we are. But the way that will come across in terms of communicating value is very different. If I offer Darren something that is sentimental and meaningful to him, he might be feeling really uncomfortable and like, whoa, dude back it up, you know, (laughs) keep it at like, you good, bro? Sure, I'm good. I mean, like that might be about where we're comfortable versus another team member is like, oh, say more, you know, oh, you're considering me, you're sensitive. I mean that with all sincerity, people have different barometers of what they need. And so this understanding is so vital to this skill set because though it may sound like a lot of work, (laughs) like, wow, who's got time? to learn all this about trust in people and who has all this time to learn about compassion and what I would offer you as manager, you're going to spend the time anyway. Because if you don't meet the need and they don't trust you and they don't think you care, you just significantly decrease their engagement. It went down because if I don't feel like you care, there's no way I'm going above and beyond for you. If I can't trust you, I will withhold my best and probably will start looking for a, a situation where I can trust. So though each of these skills, Darren, as we talk about them, they're very clearly presented as something you can grow, the the work involved in the long run, sometimes even short run, pays for itself. And the huge part is when people start actually seeing that you're making those attempts, 
it won't transition overnight, but that cumulative effect, the, the small things become the big things here. So it really is. And to Brandon's point, it's the elements that we can't afford not to spend time in developing. Because guess what? When they disengage, guess who gets to do the work? You do <laughs> as a manager, right? We've been there. I've been there. I've definitely been there. And if somebody has checked out in past jobs that I've had, that's exactly what happens. And it falls on your shoulder. And that's exactly why we get stuck in this cycle. So if we think we're stuck now, really, we encourage you to take a look in the mirror at the importance of going through these and how these little one, two degree shifts can create massive change for you. And the final two, stability and hope, take us through a little bit of those. I know trust was the heaviest. I got to say this, and you and I both recognize it. People prefer your leader to be the same most times. <laughs> be yes. the same person. Yes. Most of us don't like instability. We don't like it when a person is unpredictable. We want to have some idea of what we're up against. And the reality is every person has bad days and every person has good days. And some of us are better in the morning and some of us we warm up by around lunchtime. Some of us get crabby when we haven't eaten. Some of us need to go for walks or drink our water, whatever it is. The stability is that I am a consistent person and you can count on me. And that is important because this part of individualized does come back to me. Does my team know who I am? And then can I then learn who they are and where they're most stable? There's a worksheet that we've done with many teams and it's called the best of me. And it's where we actually encourage people to know when you can get the best from them or when you're going to get the worst from them. And people write the darndest things. <laughs> you know, we're going to get the, I'm not a morning person. Talk to me after my first cup of coffee. Don't try to ask me to do something late afternoon. I'm good for nothing. Like we get all kinds of very interesting comments and we tell managers, you just got amazing intelligence. <laughs> you got incredible knowledge about the people you're leading and use that knowledge wisely. Also help them to know you. And then lastly, we're going to get deep into hope when we talk about inspiration because we each want to be motivated. And what we know about hope and inspiration and motivation is that people respond to recognition and motivation differently. Some of us require a lot of it. We need to know where we stand on a regular basis. Others of us, pretty much good. I don't need much at all. Give me a little bit every now and then, and that goes a long way. And so that importance is something we will get to unpack together. Absolutely. And the next piece that we're going to get into here is I want to take us through, Brandon, unpacking the highs and lows of the individualized skill. This is a great opportunity for you as a listener to think through where do you lie on this particular skill and your own ability to just naturally individualize? Is this something that you feel like you show up naturally and you're really strong in? Or is this something that maybe you're not quite as strong in? That's okay. All of us are going to show up with a different set of these skills and be at a different level. And we're going to give you some key questions and some tools that you can step into as you're going through this that will help you develop and help you grow in this individualized skills here. So Brandon, explain to us what are the highs and lows of individualized? What are some key words even that describe individualized? We talk about this. You can think about the high on a scale of one to five. It's called a Liker scale. And so on a, on a five, this is strongly agree. In our case, it's mastery. So if you've mastered the skill, rock on. That's amazing. And some of these you're going to hear, you're going to go, oh, that's my jam. I got that one. A one would be either novice, I'm just starting, or completely revelatory. It's all new as a concept to me, or I'm really not this good. <laughs> I really don't. Nah, that's not me at all. More three is your hit or miss. So the, the objective is to hit fours and fives. And the good news is, is all 12, you can do that. It does require you to take intentional effort and we, we want to encourage that. And so with individualize, when we say a high, a five, this is someone who is valuing each person for their unique contribution and recognizing and validating the need of each person. Meaning I know who you are and what you bring. And I also know what you need from me to be successful. In addition, I have adjusted my style to how you learn best. I'm meeting your needs. And equally, I am also aligning work to fit your skill set. So I'm looking for ways to give you the best opportunity to succeed by aligning the work to fit your strengths. Now, the low end would be really summed up in this. It's a one-size-fit-all. So I'm going to approach it as you all build trust the same. 
You all think about work the same. I can give you instructions the same. I give it one way, you either get it or you don't. And I expect you to adapt to me. That is the opposite of individualized. That actually really is, as Darren started today, that's making it about one individual and I'm the individual. I'm the important one here. And that's the low end. And that today might be a new concept. And if you find that offensive, um, do know that's not our intent. However, what we hear again and again from people with bosses that they really struggle with, it's because they feel like I have to adapt to you and there's nothing coming back. Great bosses advance in this skill with outstanding results. Yeah, and that's the piece. In our work that we've done, we're not just talking as having only spoken to managers, spoken to bosses, spoken to leaders. We've got to speak to the whole organization and we've seen the transformation from very low engagement scores in teams where they're struggling. They're struggling to make it from quarter to quarter to having a boss look in the mirror and say, I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna go through. What are the shifts that need to make? And it's okay if you're feeling some of that in your initial response. So let's move in here to, um, there's a great book by Marcus Buckingham and Ashley Goodall here. So the nine lies about work, right? And we want to think about this through individualizing our approach to our team because everybody reacts differently in any given situation. Brandon, tell us a little bit more about some of the nuggets that come out of this book here in our last few minutes that we have. So Nine Lies About Work, A Free Thinking Leader's Guide to the Real World. And Marcus Buckingham is one of the pioneers of the strengths movement. And still to this day, he's a voice. He's continuing to grow and learn and add to the conversation. And I love in this book because he captures further just elements of what people need to be successful at work. And I love one of them. He said, a person needs to be able to strongly agree that my team members have my back. They need to strongly agree to that. And he goes on to expound on several more, but think about that for a minute. If I'm going to be successful, I want to know that Darren's got my back. Well, how does Darren know whether Darren has my back? How do I know whether Darren? We both would have unique descriptions and definitions of having one's back. Yet, I know when it's real to me, and he knows when it's real to him. And in this book, what we love, and one of the quotes that Marcus is known for is, leaders, really genius man, true genius, is their ability to individualize. So great managers understand how to trip each person's trigger. Meaning, I know the tripwire that leads Darren to know I got his back, and he learns it about me. And in this book, I think Marcus does a good job of unpacking myths in the workplace. And equally, he helps you to really capture some of how to grow as this manager with the skill to individualize. Yeah, and it's so important. Again, we want to come back to this is not any of the things that we're going through over the arc of manager intelligence within the show. It's not a function of you get to do it one time, you check the box, you got it, because different seasons change. What has 2020 brought, Brandon? Nothing but change and uncertainty and differences in how we're interacting and even doing work. And the whole point here is people are going to have different responses based on different stimulus, based on different changes that come through. And sometimes as a manager, one of the best things we can do is just reset to just have those pulse check-ins. We're going to know those core pieces of this person has my back. And if somebody's acting off, there might be something that's a little bit deeper there and it gives you a chance to go there and kind of find that out. So I wanted to take us through as we're closing and just share a couple of key questions that you can ask of yourself first, because it's really important for you to capture as a manager, but you can then ask these to your team members, to your employees. Some of these you might even be able to ask with a peer that manages alongside of you or even ask of your boss. And I'm just going to share just a couple of these with you. So number one is, what is your preferred way to receive information? You really want to think about that. Brandon talked about his differences in learning styles and figuring some of those elements out. That's so critical. So what is your preferred way to receive information? The second question is, how do you learn best? And you can dig deeper with that question. Not only how do you learn best, but also share with me a time that you felt really successful in learning. Sometimes people might say, well, I like to read it. I like to talk it out. Give me an example of how that's been successful or how that's led to success. Inch away just a little bit deeper into that. And I encourage you to do that for yourself as well. That can just be conversational restarts if you're seeing something off with somebody. If you have an employee, 
Brandon, we talked about in other episodes, rising to the level of your most engaged employee and talking about that one that you want to clone. Make no mistake about it. It's not a function of don't invest the time asking those questions of these people. Keep investing in those folks as well because they're going to create even further momentum for you. You might only be at the beginning of their talent, of their potential, where they can actually be. So I encourage you to follow up, ask some of those questions. You will see those as well in some of the show notes as well as even some bonus questions that are in there that you can ask and tackle for yourself. So Brandon, thanks again for joining us and taking us on the tour today of the manager intelligence skill of individualized. Next week in our next episode, we will be unpacking the manager intelligence skill of integrity. Until then, have a great rest of your day. Thanks a lot. Thank you. If you want to continue your growth in Leading Strong by hanging out with others committed to Leading Strong, join one of our LinkedIn or Facebook groups by looking for The Leading Strong Show. The truth is organizational results like productivity, profitability, and low employee turnover rise and fall based on employee engagement. The world is starving for strong leaders as they not only impact an organization's performance, They create massive influence on an employee's overall health and well-being. If you want to learn more about becoming a great place to work or 34 Strong's signature Leading Strong programs, simply go to 34strong.com, where you will also be able to access resources you can start using immediately and stay connected with us. I want to thank you for sharing this episode with everyone you know who will benefit. Be sure to subscribe through your favorite podcasting channels and please leave us a review. A big shout out to Wendell Fishman for writing and arranging the tune Aunt Lion for Leading Strong. Remember, everyone deserves a great place to work and any workplace can be great. You can create culture by intention and design and change happens with every life you touch. I am Darren Verasami here to help you lead strong. Until next time, my friends, I'm out.